In this week's video, we discover Momenta, an integrated dance organization that includes disabled and able-bodied professional dancers. Stephanie Clemens, one of the founders, talked about how Momenta was formed. This Momenta began in 1983 and it was founded by Larry Ipple, Jim Tenuta, and me. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we just wanted an outlet for doing our own choreography. But Larry Ipple had taught with me for 10 years, and he is the one who helped me open the door to children initially who had disabilities. Larry said, why don't we celebrate the accessibility of our building by making a piece for dancers who use wheelchairs. And the two dancers that are here with me, Ginger and Chris, were the first people that Larry invited to perform. Oh gosh, everybody can dance about 12 years ago at least. It started first as dancing on wheels. We had kids come with skateboards and wheelchairs and, and uh, any kind of wheels that they felt they wanted to bring. And that got to be a little wild. So can you tell me some of the more notable moments of Everybody Can Dance and also Momenta? We worked with a composer named Ilya Levinson for that. And Ilya was a, a composer from, I think, University of Chicago is where he's based. And he created a score for us. And I remember him saying that watching the dancers on wheels was like watching ice skaters. Then another high point was uh, a piece that Chris was in that Larry created that was uh, a, a memorial to 9-11. Uh, and I, I have trouble talking about it, but Chris, Chris did a wonderful job in that. We had a, a very wonderful painting by the artist Bruno Cerdo that was projected as a background to what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, Larry took images from the painting and he made them come alive on the stage. So that was very memorable. And I think that it put Chris into the midst of all of are able-bodied dancers in a, a regular piece as a dancer rather than making a piece that was just for somebody who had a disability. One of the other most memorable pieces for me was a piece called Ashes, where we, we really decided to torment Chris. We, <laughs> we, you, you take a Roman bench like they use in gym mm -hmm. and you make it eight feet tall and you strap him down and compress him with rigging shorts and a mouse trap on his, his uh, hips and hang him so that he's front of his body is hanging off the end upside down and then ask him to lift a woman who weighs about 130 pounds for nine minutes upside down. It, it was one of the most beautiful and powerful pieces that we've ever done. What cool things are on the horizon for Momenta in 2019 and beyond? Well, for, I, can, I can talk about 2019 very openly and easily now because that's, that's, that's really just about planned for sure. We're going to be back at the mayor's office for people with disabilities with a workshop of a day and a half, uh, I think the second weekend in April. And then we're back at the center on Halstead September 7th and 8th for another counterbalance performance. And so we have to begin to create repertory for that concert. And that, a lot of people say, well, just come and do a dance. They don't realize it's hours and hours and hours of rehearsal and creativity and coming up with ideas and movement. Ginger Lane has been dancing since childhood. She became a wheelchair dancer in 1984. Shortly after that, she collaborated with the Joffrey Ballet. Back in the late, late 90s, the Joffrey Ballet was just moving from New York to Chicago. Mm -hmm. 
and we did a benefit performance for Access Living. So I had the privilege of being able to dance with Joffrey dancers, and a, a new piece was commissioned and created for that benefit. So, which was um, a real highlight because the artistic director, Jerry Arpino, wanted to explore what, was a, what were possibilities in Chicago. And from, those, from that performance, he, we, we actually did a performance at Ravinia um, following the benefit that we did for Access Living. Mm -hmm. And he did a question and answer session after the performance. And it was talking about the fact that everybody can dance. So one young man raised his hand who had cerebral palsy. And he said, well, can I come and audition? Really? Uh -huh, which kind of put Mr. Arpino on the spot. And he said, absolutely, you come and audition. And for about eight or 10 years, he, Arpino, had a, a young person in a wheelchair as part of the Nutcracker every year for about 10 years. Really? In 2000, Ginger Lane was named one of 100 women making a difference in today's Chicago Woman magazine. Since 2008, Ginger has served as coordinator of the Arts and Cultural Project at Access Living. Ginger is a 2017 Three Arts Community Awardee for her dance prowess. One of the highlights of this past year was that I had been in Israel and I met a dance troupe uh, in Israel that uh, was also a physically integrated group. Uh -huh. And I asked them if they would like to collaborate on a piece. So we did. So we had that company on video and we had our dancers on stage live in front of the, the screen. And the piece was called Community. So it was a wonderful collaboration of a company 6,000 miles away yeah. and a company here. Yeah. Work, working together. And I have put out some feelers to see if we can't continue that kind of uh, partnership. So maybe, maybe for next year we can create something with the two companies again. That would, that's a wonderful idea. Yeah. yeah. Ginger talked about what she was trying to convey in one of the dances that she choreographed. We, we worked together the entire time, but at the end, as we are moving upstage, there's almost a lifting and moving up into the sky or the heaven. Yeah. And you can read into that whatever you want. So harmony is perhaps a very good interpretation. And if that's what you came away with, I'm glad. Ginger, Chris, and Stephanie talked about the differences between traditional dance and integrated dance. Well, I'd say with integrated dance, um, the work between a choreographer and dancers is more collaborative on average than it is um, with traditional dance where you don't have dancers with disabilities. Uh -huh. So uh, I think it's like just c communicating and observing and seeing what someone does. And a lot of times what happens is a choreographer will say, I want you to go from here to there, you know, give me, show me how you might do it and, then, and have them do it three or four different ways. And then the choreographer will say, okay, the second way, I want you to do it that way. Or they might take the second way and say, okay, when you do that, add this to it or hold your hand differently. You know, it might tweak the movement a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's more, uh, typically, the integrated dance is relatively new. There's not like hundreds of years of repertory of 
dance that you could draw from. Right. And when you say, he's a wheelchair dancer, she's a wheelchair dancer, or a you know, dancer with a disability, um, even though Ginger is a wheelchair dancer and I'm a wheelchair dancer, we have totally different bodies and shapes and movement patterns and abilities. And so it's like it's not like we're an identical piece that you could plug in and say, this is the wheelchair dancer's role. Yeah. Right. Every, every piece I've seen here of the physically integrated has started with the individual dancers and what they can do. And you have to start with the idea of what they can do, not what they can't do. Chris Lenzo is a monster wheelchair dancer. Prior to becoming a dancer, he was a national champion in both wheelchair basketball and track several times for the U.S. team. Chris talked about how he feels about dancing and what he does to prepare for a performance. I've seen you dance in Radioactive and River this year. Um, and clocks. And clocks, yeah. Your agility, strength, and grace is incredible. Oh, thank you. What do you feel like when you were dancing? Um, well, when it goes well, I, when it's over, I feel like, oh, that's it, that's it, it's already done. <laughs> and if, if it's not going that well, I'm, it's a, more of a struggle. Um, but I, the idea is to rehearse it and get the, bot, get the movement in your body and really feel it and know it. And then um, do it, you know, from muscle memory and you just, it just flows. And, uh, you know, but it, I always say that dancing is uh, doing things that are often very difficult and making them look uh, effortless, so. Okay. What exercises do you do to keep in shape? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I do Pilates and yoga. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of helps me with flexibility and injury prevention. And then I do different resistance exercises like weightlifting or calisthenics. Um, most, you know, the, during the nice weather part of the year, I ride my bike a fair amount, and then mm -hmm. if I'm, it's in the winter time when I'm not riding outside, I have an exercise bike that I ride, and that's kind of for general conditioning and aerobic uh, fitness. Okay. Uh, and then rehearsing, uh, I'm usually rehearsing most of the year. Ginger sums up the benefits of being a part of an inclusive dance troupe like Momenta. There's also a sense of um, independence and empowerment that I think comes from being able, from doing what you love to do and getting fulfillment from it, but also being a part of the larger world, disability so often uh, isolates people from the larger society. Mm -hmm. For dance, it's not always easy to find a community that is accepting. It was my pleasure to have a wonderful conversation with Stephanie Clemens, Ginger Lane, and Chris Linzo of Momenta. For more information, check out Momenta's website at momentadances.com. Everybody Can Dance is an integrated movement workshop held every third Sunday for both people with a disability and for people with no disability. It is held at the Academy of Movement and Music in Oak Park, Illinois. Well, 
That concludes this edition of Fun for the Disabled. Next week, we'll be covering a company that provides engineering and construction services for the disabled. Please share my video and blog with everyone you know. Bye-bye.